Hello, friends, and welcome into College Football Now. I am your host, Tom Downey. We've been going through head coach candidates. Now we've got some offensive and defensive ones for Texas. Tom Herman has overhauled his coaching staff after a down year. He's going to have a new defensive coordinator, a new offensive coordinator, and some changes overall to the assistant coaching staff. It's very clear what Herman is doing here. He has to. It is win now or he's going to be just like Charlie Strong and end up getting fired by Texas. So here are the main coaching changes for Texas at least so far. Co-DC and really the main DC, the play caller, Todd Orlando, he's out. He's been fired. Tim Beck, he has been demoted. will still probably be on the staff, but there's going to be a new play caller there. The receivers coach, Drew Meringer's also been fired. Uh, Corby Meekins has been demoted. And then finally, Craig Navarre, the co-DC right now and safeties coach. He's the interim. I don't think he's a real candidate, though, for the defensive coordinator job for next season. So before we dive into OC candidates and defensive coordinator candidates, how hot is Tom Herman's seat next year? Grade this for me on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being, what hot seat? Last year didn't happen. We're coming off a win over Georgia, and Texas is back again. 10, you're freaking out. You'd rather have Charlie Strong. The answer, I think, kind of lies somewhere in the middle, but it's probably above a 5 right now. Texas should be good, but haven't we said that for years now? Let's dive into the offensive coordinator candidates. I've got eight of them for you, and if you were on the defensive side of the ball. First up is Larry Fedora. You know him as the former North Carolina head coach. He's also currently an analyst with Texas, but probably not going to be back with the Longhorns next year. He wants a shot at being a head coach. I don't know if he really wants to be an OC right now. I don't know if Texas wants him anyway. So I wanted to make that of him because he is on the staff. He feels like a long shot, though. Number seven, how about Michigan's offensive line coach, Edward Warner, who, of course, coached with Tom Herman at Ohio State. I think he's done a good job with that Michigan offensive line. I think he's a little bit more of a fallback option. I would like this idea. I don't know how feasible it actually ends up being, given that this does have her hand as the offensive line coach right now. What if Ed Warner comes over as the associate head coach and still gets to be the offensive line guy if they bring in a new coaching staff and they make some major changes. Just a thought there. He has been the OC, at least in title, for Ohio State in the past. I just don't think he's the top target here for Texas. Number six, how about Mike Yersich, the passing game coordinator for Ohio State? More on a different passing game coordinator, hint, hint, in a little bit. He's also the quarterback's coach right now at Ohio State. He came to the Buckeyes from a different OSU. That's Oklahoma State. He was the offensive coordinator there from 2013 through 2018. He's a sharp, young offensive mind. And also, I feel like a bit under the radar. I, obviously, there are other names we'll get to who are bigger. But he's done a good job everywhere he's gone. And given the ties between Herman and OSU, even though there's a new one, I feel like that one was worth mentioning. So he checks in at number six. At number five, not that far away from Austin, Rhett Lashley, the SMU offensive coordinator, who's bounced around a few different jobs, was at Auburn for a long time with Gus Malzahn, and then kind of got forced out by some of the power brokers with the Tigers, and he goes to UConn, and it was just all one thing after another there. But he's done a good job with former Texas quarterback Shane Bouchel. He's been at SMU since 2018, among these kind of fallback options, the not top candidates, I think Rhett Lashley might be one of those top ones and certainly one of the most gettable ones on this. Of course, it's Texas. They should be able to get somebody good. Now, if you are a Texas football fan, I got a special deal for you guys. Chatsports.com slash NCAA gear. They've got tons of Texas items on it. So that hoodie you see right there, it's for under 50 bucks. They've got hoodies, shirts, T-shirts, jerseys, everything you could want at chatsports.com slash NCAA gear. And oh, by the way, if you're not a Texas fan, we got plenty of other gear for your favorite team on there as well on Fanatics. So head over there today. All that gear is up to 50% off chatsports.com slash NCAA gear. Let's move on now into number four on our list. Some of the bigger names. Jeff Scott, the co-offensive coordinator with Tony Elliott. For Clemson. He's held that role since 2015. He is among the highest paid assistant coaches in all of college football, was a Clemson recruiting coordinator. It'd be a great hire, right? So why wouldn't you want him? 
well, it's not that you don't want him. It's that, can you actually get him? How much, how much of a career growth move is going from co-OC at Clemson to Texas OC? He, of course, would not have to shoot him for the title, but I don't think that's much of a jump for Jeff Scott. I think his next move might be taking on a head coaching gig somewhere in college football. Number three, Chad Morris. This one has been floated out there on the interwebs. Terrible head coach. Uh, let's just face facts. He was a disaster at Arkansas. Never won an SEC game or even a Power 5 matchup. But he was a good Clemson OC from 2011 to 2014. I don't really know what Chad Morris's next move is. Maybe he'll go to the Nick Saban school for coaches who can't coach, get a woman to do other stuff good too. But I think Morris could be an option there for Texas, but not quite inside what I think is a pretty clear top two. Now, before we get to the top of the list here for OC and get to the DC list, let me know, who do you want as your number one target, be it for defensive coordinator or offensive coordinator? If you could hire one guy for Texas on either side of the ball, who is it? Let me know, because I think our number two guy is going to be a pretty popular answer to that question. That's Joe Brady, the passing game coordinator for LSU. He comes in. All of a sudden, the Tigers' offense exists for the first time, it feels like, in years in the actual side of the passing game. Now, he is not the OC in title, but he has a tremendous amount of influence in this offense. We see his, his imprints in there, and he's going to place, too. Now, he's the obvious number one target. So why is he number one, you might ask? Well, LSU doesn't want to allow him to leave, right? And if you're the Tigers... I mean, you're going to have that open checkbook and say, Joe Brady will give you the OC. You know things are going great. And if you're LSU, you probably say, hey, Ed Orgeron's seat's a lot cooler right now than Tom Herman's. And I think Brady as well might even draw some head coaching interest this year. So at number one then, I've got Graham Harrell. I think he is one of the more, if not the most likely option for Texas. Right now is the USC offensive coordinator. He was at North Texas. Right after he leaves North Texas, they kind of fall apart on the offensive side of the ball. Correlation, I think it makes some sense, though, at least. Clay Owens' future, very much in doubt at USC, both for this year and beyond, frankly. Harold, by the way, is reportedly interested in the Texas job. I think going from USC to Texas is a smart career move for Graham Harrell. Gives him a little bit more stability. And if he has success, well, he's instantly going to be right back in the mix there among guys who, hey, maybe this guy could be our head coach target next year in the coaching carousel. So who do you think Texas will hire as its offensive coordinator? Let me know in the comments section. I think it's really going to be a two-coach race between Graham Harrell and, and Joe Brady. I think Harrell was more gettable. I think that ends up being picked. But let me know what you guys think. On now to the defensive side of the ball. Once again, kind of two guys that jump out of mind. But first, number four, that's Mike McIntyre, who – for now, is the defensive coordinator at Ole Miss probably out of job. Uh, Ole Miss has fired Matt Luke. That means McIntyre is a, a de facto free agent in, in, in that kind of sense for the coaching carousel. I think he's a fallback option for Texas. I, I don't think he should be the first call. He shouldn't even be in the first couple of calls. You can go after bigger names. But McIntyre could be a decent, hey, we missed out on other guys. What about him? That's also the case for number three on our list. That is Barry Odom of well, formerly of Missouri. Common theme here, right, guys? Fired by the Tigers after four years. He was the defensive coordinator before he got promoted to replace Gary Pinkle. I thought he did a solid job as the D.C. at Missouri. I think he will have interest. Sometimes the fire coaches want to take a break, but Odom going to Texas as the D.C. could be a nice little jump start, restart for his coaching career. At number two here, and this is the one that... I think Texas would love to pull off. Morgan Scully, the Utah defensive coordinator. This would be a home run hire. He has done a fantastic job at Utah as the defensive coordinator. I mean, I know we don't always watch Pac-12 West Coast football because it's so late. He's done a fantastic job. He's in his fourth year, though, as the Utah defensive coordinator. And he's a former Utah player, has spent his entire coaching career there. Does he want to leave? I don't know if he does. Maybe he's just biding his time until Kyle Whittingham is to step away. But you definitely call because if you can get him, I think you've got one of the best young defensive coordinators in the country on your staff. 
Now, today's show is brought to you by BetDSI. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code CFB120 for a 120% deposit bonus. You put down 50 bucks, they're going to give you an extra 60 for free. My track record of always bet on Tom Herman as the underdog did not pan out this year. I made a lot of money last year. This year, though, uh, things have not gone according to me. So if that changes next year, either they got plenty of money still on betting side because of that deposit bonus. It's chatsports.com slash bet. That promo code one more time is CFB120. On now to number one on the defensive coordinator list. Maybe it elicits some groans, but I, I, I'm actually okay with this one. This is Chris Ash, who you might best know as the fire Rutgers head coach because that is not a job most people should take. But there are ties here, both A, on the field, because Chris Ash, former Ohio State defensive coordinator, that that's a pretty good track record. And, of course, he coached with Tom Herman, and he's already on the staff. He's an analyst right now for Texas. He came in once he was fired by Rutgers and the Scarlet Knights. I think this is a logical hire for Texas. A guy who is familiar with Tom Herman will abandon the three-man front, which I hate in college football. It does not work. Please use four defensive linemen. Even if one's an undersized pass rusher, please do that. Don't go with a 3-3-5. I, I don't think it's a very good scheme. Ash, I think we'll run more of a 4-3. So he's number one. I think the most likely of the options here. But who do you think Texas will hire as its defensive coordinator? Maybe it's a name I didn't even put on my list. But let me know. Defensive, offensive coordinators, those were our top candidates. Change is coming for Texas, and for Longhorn fans, it better work out this time, or they're going to be back looking once again for a new head coach.